Last lesson, what I did is I took two parts, part 5.1, part 5.2, and I thought they'd each be small enough to put together for one lesson, and I ended up making a long video, and I realized I didn't cover enough. So we're going over a little bit more today, part two. So this is more functions, and we'll go over again what a function is. But our learning intentions are, first, to become, to become more comfortable with function notation. I started that last lesson and then ran out of time. So I'm going to go into that deeper. You'll see a lot of function notation in the future. And also to be able to evaluate a function. And you can evaluate a function when it's not in function notation, but function notation sets it up nicely in an obvious way on how to evaluate. So I'm going to be showing you that. I'm going to attempt to explain what a function is again in another way. So a function has for each element in the domain, so the first set, what's being input. So for each element in its domain, only or exactly one element in its range. Okay, so here's an example. A function machine. Think of this as a little conveyor belt. I'm going to put things in, an input, and then it's going to give me things back out. So if, let's say, this is um, calculating money, 0 0.25 cents, a quarter. If I put in one quarter, I get 25 cents, the value. If I put in two quarters, I get, in the machine, out of the machine, I get 50 cents. I put in three quarters, I get 75 cents. I put in one quarter, I get 25 cents. I put in one quarter, I get 25 cents. So hopefully you can see, for each of the elements in the domain, I get only one possible answer. So every time I put a 1 in, each of those times, I got exactly one answer. And that answer was 25 cents. Put in a 1, 25 cents. Put in a 1, 25 cents. If for some reason I put in a 1, broken machine gave me 30 cents, that would not be a function because I can only have one answer for each specific domain. So if the domain is 1, the answer is 25 cents. If I get something else like 30, that would be broken. Another example of this would be, maybe I am flying in a plane. Here's my awesome plane. And so you're on the ground. So at zero seconds, my height is zero meters. At 20 seconds into the flight, I'm at 100 meters in the air. At 60 seconds of flight, or a minute, I'm 400 meters in the air. At, um, let's say, 10 minutes, so 600 seconds, I am 5,000 meters in the air. So here's the thing. It's a function because for each of these, I only get one answer. When I'm at 20 seconds, I can't be at 100 feet and, let's say, do 20 again, I can't be at 100 feet and at 30 feet, okay? Because a function says for each one, I can only get one answer. So at 20 seconds, I can only be one height in the air. I can't be in two different spots. So that's a function. For each input, I get one output. So if I put 20 in again, and my function machine's working properly, I know my answer, I'm gonna get 100. Because for 20 is always 100. 20 is always 100. Otherwise, it's not a function, okay? so. That is a function machine. So now how we can use a function is this. Let's say you're in your plane. The height of the plane equals, let's say, for every, um, you're 100 feet for every time unit. So your height is 100 feet maybe for every minute. Okay, maybe you're rising really slow. It's a balloon or a plane. It's not a plane, but it's a, an air balloon or a balloon you let off. So the height is 100 times the time, and time could be one minute. So is this a function? It is, because if t was one minute, we would get the height is 100. If the time was two minutes, 2 times 100, I'm at 200 feet. At 5 minutes, how high am I? I am 
100 times 5 is 500. So your height and your time is always, notice they are, sorry, if we put 2 in, this will make more sense. Again, I get 200. So it's a function because for every domain, I get exactly one answer. For the answer domain of 2, I get 200. Domain of 2, I get 200. Okay, so if this is my equation back to last day, this is a two-variable equation. Variables are just fancy word for letters. Height's a variable, time's a variable. Now in function notation, we would write this, the height, sorry, h, and we say of t when there's brackets, but really what it means is the height with respect to time is 100t. That's how this would be written, written in function notation. So this is two variable. This is function notation. So quick practice. If I said the money you make, so your wage is you get $20 per hour plus you get $100 just for showing up. This is a really well-paying job. You get $100 just showing up. And then for every hour you work, they're going to pay you 20 extra dollars. And so your wage is $20 times the hours work plus 100. This is a two-variable equation. Okay? And typically we don't need these brackets here. It's just 20 H's, $20 times every hour you work. Two variables. What would it look like in function notation? In function notation, we simply add brackets and we add this other variable. So function notation is always brackets. So this is w of h equals 20h plus 100. Here it's w equals 20h plus 100. Again, two variable, because all there is is two variables, a w and an h. Function notation, because you're getting this brackets, which is w of h. And now, one reason we like this notation is because when you see this notation, you know it's a function. You don't have to think about this definition. Oh, is this going to meet all the requirements of the function? When you see function notation, you know it already is. And it's also going to help us for our next part, which is evaluating functions. So the way to evaluate a function, so here let's use this one here instead of starting a whole new one. Here's our function notation. Your wage for every hour is 20 times the number of hours plus 100. So to evaluate, it might say, what, how much do you make for five hours of work? That is evaluating this function. For five hours of work, your wage for five hours equals, and here's how function notation works. What got changed from here to here? The only difference is the H is now a five. So you substitute anywhere else there's an H becomes a 5. Here's an H, so it becomes a 5. This is evaluating a function. So what's your wage for 5 hours? Well, your wage for 5 hours is 20 times 5 is 100 plus 100. You made $200 for your 5 hours of work. So that's evaluating a function. Um, and I'm going to put up a few more so we can practice, and then we'll go from there. Now let's evaluate some functions. So using the function f of x equals 3x plus 2, not important yet, but this is just going to be a line that looks like this. Evaluate the following, f of 2. So when you look at this, here's our function f of 2, notice that f of x looks a lot like the f of 2. It's f bracket, f bracket. Notice the 2 was an x. So what you need to do is take wherever there was an x and put a 2 there. So f of 2 equals my 2 replaces the x. And 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So what this means is when x is 2, because f of x 
that x changed into a 2. So when x was 2, because remember it's an xy grid, when x is 2, f of x is fancy for y, it means x is 2, y is 8. So the coordinate 2, 8, will be on my grid. Next one, what is f of 0? Notice, the x turned into a 0, so I turned all my x's into zeros. So this is 3, it was x, now it's 0. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. So when the x turn into 0, which is right here, when the x is 0, f of x means y, so y is 2. And notice, so when x was 0, my line goes through this point, 0, 2. Okay. If you're not getting this, that's okay. We're going to go more in depth into this later. For now, what I really need you to be able to do is when you recognize the x being replaced by a 2, you change your x's into 2's and solve. And backwards of this is now, if it says f of x equals 8, what is x? Well, think, what changed? If f of x is 8, well, here's my f of x. It's telling me that's 8. f of x is 8. 8. So... I'll write out the whole thing just so it's a little more obvious. f of x equals 3x plus 2. That's the function I'm working with in the question. And it says f of x is 8. Change this to 8. So 8 equals 3x plus 2. Now solve. Subtract 2 from both sides. 3 times x. To get the x alone, I do the opposite. So instead of timesing, I divide by 3x equals 2. So, it, when x is 2, y was 8, just like we found up here. When the x changed to a 2, y was 8. x is 2, y is 8. Okay. So, on our graph, when x is 2, the y height is 8. Okay. So, this is evaluating a function. Another one, if it was um, the distance in relation to time. You're going 60 kilometers an hour, so you're going 60 for every hour. Okay, and we're going to say time is in hours. So D of, sorry, so the distance in relation to time is 60t. This could also just look like D equals 60t. That's two variable. Function notation rewrites it so that our range has this of t bit. So now, if the question said, what is d of 5? Meaning, in 5 hours, what's the distance? The t changed to a 5. So I changed the t to a 5. 60 times 5 is 300. And we're going kilometers per hour, I said, so there's 300 kilometers. Okay. So before you take a look at the assignment today, if you didn't get your last day's lesson, if it didn't really make sense, go back and take a look, um, same page, but go back and take a look at questions six and seven again. Uh, this, today's lesson explained things a little more in depth, so hopefully six and seven make more sense if you didn't get them last day. To add to this assignment though, for today's stuff, evaluating functions and things like that, I want you to do on page 272, questions 14, 15, 18, and 19. Um, that'll give you some good practice with practicing function notation. So stay classy, math class.